are very welcome. And today morning we will talk about um, the virtue of balance. So um, the we say yoga is balance. Mm-hmm. The main thing of yoga is about balance. The name of yoga itself is balance. Hatha mm-hmm. yoga is balance. Balance when we say the sun and the moon energy. What that means, you need to understand. Mm-hmm. What is the sun and the moon energy? Is the mm-hmm. you can say it's the mm, hot and cold, active and passive, male and female. Um, you say sun and moon. Mm-hmm. So everything about yoga is about that. Okay? You want to understand what yoga is about. Everything we do is to regulate the energy. And most of all of our problem is coming from the imbalance of energy. So how the imbalance of energy manifested in personalities, manifested in personalities, and how? How do you see the imbalance of personality or imbalance of energy? Hmm? Sometimes you don't see. Most of the time, actually, we don't see. That's why we suffer and we, we blame something external, but we do not see that it comes from our own imbalance of energy that do not allow us to see things in the correct manner. So we see things in an imbalanced manner. So it's like you see a reality that is lopsided. Because we have a lopsided vision. So the way how it manifests, the imbalance, is oftentimes between the emotions and the mind, the intellect. So that means what? That means you one person will be we say left brain dominant or right brain dominant. So that's the way how it says. So what that means, you describe a little bit a left brain dominant person. A left brain dominant person will not have what? Will not have connection to the emotions. That's the way how you can describe it. Yeah? And when the, the, you can say the emotions is stuck or they cannot feel it. <coughs> because the left side of the, the personality of the brain is dominating the right side. So they are more rigid, as people you can describe. They become very rigid. Everything has to go through the uh, reasoning. They cannot be spontaneous. Um, they have a difficulty to practice empathy either for oneself or for others. Empathy means putting yourself in the skin of somebody and understand the feeling and the experience of somebody. Or even putting yourself in your own kind of uh, skin as well. Uh, have the feeling for oneself and know when to, you know, how to harmonize our emotions, when to stop, when to go further. You have no idea. Yeah, because you are out of touch of your own emotions, your own feeling. So it can become something like, you know, sometimes can be self, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, Absorbed. Huh? Absorbed. Self-absorbed. Yeah, of course. Any, emo- any imbalance is self-absorbed. Okay? Any imbalance is self-absorbed. So this is what we are talking about is the imbalance of the left brain. Mm-hmm. So you... Um, nothing wrong with the brain, yeah, but uh, we are born with both sides. That's a problem. We are born split, isn't it? Not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have both hands, we have both arms, we have both sides of the brain. Everything is just split like this. So we would have to Unite, that's called yoga, that's called balance, how to bring it together. 
that uh, the, the both um, brain <laughs> will not be split. Yeah? So I, again, I continue describing the left brain dominant person. That is, like I said, lack of uh, feeling of, uh, for oneself. Yeah? Also lack of feeling for other people. Cannot tune in, cannot tune in to somebody's feeling, as well as to tune in to one's own self feeling. <coughs> so then it can be um, self. Um, uh, you can uh, how do you say that? Self violence. Mm? Self violence can be uh, lack of lack of tuning. You understand? Know, tuning means you know this is the right thing, right tone, harmony. But when it's a lack of it, then it can be uh, self-violence or self-torture uh, or self... Uh, uh, when we say lack of empathy, means you cannot feel. You cannot feel what is it that you should do or you should not do, that you should stop doing and you should regulate yourself back or balance yourself back or know what is right and what is wrong for yourself. So that, that left branch should say, I'm, I need to do this. <coughs> And just keep going and doing this, even though it need to stop, but it could not stop. So it can create this kind of, um, um, you can imagine, difficulty to oneself, as well as difficulty to other people around, to relationships and to whatever you do, because it's only one side of the picture. Logical, yeah? logic. Logical means this is it, and this is it. But life is not like that. Yeah? Life is not all logical, isn't it? <coughs> it's not all like this is the way how it is, and this is the way how it is. It's not like that. It's never like that, actually. Is it not? The truth is, it's never like that. But when a person left brain, that's what it is. That's how they see the world, between black and white. So you can imagine that a lot of problems can come from that. They, they cannot be in touch with the emotion. That's uh, the way I'm describing. They don't feel. Or the, even the feeling will be out of control. Yeah. We'll be feeling and then repressing. You can always say re repressing, but basically lack of touch. Make the person unhappy. A right brain dominant person would be a different picture. Mm? They will be uh, immersed in the emotions. So the emotions become uh, the, the direction of their life and the way how they see things. So when there is no balance, then it will be completely out of control. Because like, you know emotions, the way how emotions work is with likes and dislikes. Yeah, I would like this, so the, the right brain dominant person would be, I'm like this until I die. I don't know how to stop. And um, I would dislike it until something will be destroyed. Yeah? So the like and dislike is completely out of control. So you destroy yourself also out of that emotion, out of control. So there is no, no reason to it, no balance to it. So the, the, only the emotions swing. And the up and down, the mind will be very much up and down. All this or all that. So you can see, or from the general description, you can see what kind of brain is dominant in your mind. Because like I said, we we born not perfect, not balanced. So therefore, we will suffer from one side or the other. Or 
and we want to balance ourselves back, it will not be balanced back. It will be swing between this or that. It will not call balance. If you swing between left brain or right brain, it's not balanced. You understand this? It's not called balance. It's just swinging. Because you feel yourself too much on this way, and then you go to this way. Yeah? But then this way will be missing, and this way will be missing. So it's like you can say the, you know, the, it, um, mm. the balloon, you know. You <laughs> push it this way, bunch it out that way, you push it that way, bunch it out that way. It's like that. It's, um, it's not balance. That's what we call in the world normally, psychologically, we call it balance. You know, I'm too emotional, so now I will become rational. That's what we call balance. I'm too rational, so now I want to become more emotional. I'm too rational, I don't feel my emotions, so now I go to a bar, I'm, I'm going to drink so that I can uh, inhibit myself, and then I can just talk whatever I like and go whatever with my feeling. So that is called balance. No, it's not. Yeah? It's just compensation, but it's not balance. Yeah, it's still definitely just means that something is still not right. So we, most of us, I mean 95% or now or more, 98%, 99% <laughs> struggling with this. 100%? I don't say 100%. It's never anything 100%. It's struggling with this. So sometimes you, you, you describe it as a split between the, the mind and the heart. You describe it like that. Logically, I like to do this, but my heart feels that I like to do this. Yeah? So then a terrible split between the two. So I do this, it will be right, when I feel like I like to do this. And I am just completely in the middle and in conflict. So that's the way how also we feel that conflict. Okay? More acute or less acute, depending on the person. So, the balanced person, I describe the balanced state, we call it um, the person that can achieve what we call equanimity of mind. That means a calm mind. That's the always, you see the, the picture that is behind this swinging on the mind, on the swinging of the emotions. They are basically called calm in all conditions, so that you can uh, see that. I mean, they don't get too excited about anything. Either they get something or they don't get something, or something happened or not happened. They're not too excited. They're not despondent either. They don't go into the despondency yeah, when something goes this way or that way. They don't. They are basically content. Yeah? So, the virtue of contentment. So, this, kind, this state of balance doesn't come, um, like I said, naturally. Some naturally, that's why the one percent. That means that they already um, live a life of balance or practice that long, 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 long time before. So they have that naturally kind of balance. And these people, they don't stood out. You have to notice also. They don't stood out. You don't notice them. Why? Because they are, they are so balanced that they don't stood out. Nothing strong about them. No strong opinion, no strong attitude, no strong anything. Yeah? 
they are neither self-effaced, they are not neither kind of disappearing in the in the crowd, neither, you know, uh, obviously uh, visible. Why? Because there's, there's nothing, the, the tone is neither high neither low. So. And most of people, the tone is very high or very low, so that's how you see these people. So the people that balance, you just don't see them, because they are in the middle there. They're quiet, they're calm. So, and the, the, the worldly world is, uh, most of the time, uh, how, you, how you call it, eulogizing, yeah, or putting up a person that stood up the world is thinking a person that stood out means they're exceptional. Okay? In the yoga psychology, no, not at all. And a person that stood out, according to yoga, except those, the one percent that are extraordinary, you know, because they already they are so imbalanced, uh, they're so balanced, sorry, that they get to that state we call, you know, the the higher mind, the higher personality, the super person, okay? And they completely stood out. But most of the time, we, we, we think that somebody exceptional is because they have some exceptional qualities or talents about them, and we eulogize them, but in fact, they are absolutely so imbalanced that they, they create their mark in the history, in the world, because of their imbalances. For example, you can see some extraordinary artists, they do extraordinary creative work, but they are absolutely very imbalanced. Artists. So the emotional mind is very dominant. Yeah? And you can have the, the extraordinary kind of uh, uh, scientist that also can can discover something extraordinary. Yeah. Except you look at their personal life and they are very unhappy. Because they are unhappy, they go more, 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 more toward that direction. And a person that is, you know, because they are unhappy, they go more, 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 more toward the direction of of art or of imbalance. So you look at what you uh, uh, appeal to, then you can know what is your type of mind. So those who are very much appealed to um, art, artist, you know, then you know that this is your, your, you know, your, the mind that is very developed, the kind of mind is developed in your own. And then some, that you can see, they, they would just like the, the science, the, the scientific, uh, logical, uh, scientific kind of wording. They dislike uh, the, you know, the, the creative, um, emotional or devotional kind of language. You recognize that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the most of the uh, famous artist, painter, French, or Dutch, Van Gogh, yeah. He's, he's so crazy, he cut his own ear. Yeah. But yet he paints beautiful things. Things become alive when you see his painting. Yeah. And a, a lot of artists, yeah, they can be extraordinary, and they go into the overdose. So all these are sign of sickness, sign of Um, so, 
what to do. So the first you have to recognize that. You have to recognize your your unhappiness that comes from your imbalanced state. Not coming from anybody else, because usually you know, we, we would say, uh, I'm so unhappy because, you know, this person walked out of my life. Hmm? So that, that is the, already the statement of the imbalance. And I'm so attached to that, so that when this happened, change and different, so I plunge. Yeah? It's a statement of your own imbalance. It's not a statement of something happened to you. But you cannot see that, so you always see that something happened to you. And then, uh, you know, you, you go into the, the grief and the, you know, the blame and the, and the whole thing. That takes a long time to heal. And then you go back again to another story about the same. And again it happened again. Okay? Because it's the, the lack of recognition that it comes from your own outlook. So that, that's happening. So the yoga practice gives you a little bit of a reprieve because it balances the two, it unites the two, it makes the, the imbalances become less and less and less. You are not going to become, you know, one at once. This is what we want. We are not going to become united at once. Okay? But yoga shows the way, so I mean, Vishnu Devanji said, it shows the way. I mean, it will help you to get more balance over time. But um, you would need to be aware okay, of what you're doing. You have to be aware. And it's like medicine. You know that your mind is a certain way. You have to take medicine so it would, you, know, you will not be sick. Like that. If not, then the outcome you can you can tell. Yeah? You go back to your. The moment you stop the the, the preventative measure, the, the the yoga practice, then you go back. Yeah, to your we call your your imbalance. And then you you think that you are happy. You feel that you are happy when you go back to your imbalance. Because you find something very familiar, very known, <coughs> very familiar, you call it yourself. Yeah? But it's not yourself. It's just a long trait of imbalance that's so long that you identify, you feel familiar. You identify yourself with it, you say, it's me. See, that's very dangerous when you say, that's me. So. But when you are in the, 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 the practice of balancing, okay, or get out of the imbalance, then it feels very unfamiliar and uncomfortable. That you need to know. You feel unfamiliar, uncomfortable. Because you cannot feel the same way, the way how you feel, act the same way, the way how you act. So it feels strange. If you feel like not yourself. So usually after some time like this, you, you say, ah, you know, I'm lost. You say like that, I'm lost. I don't feel myself. But in fact, you are not lost. You are on the way to balancing yourself. And it's not fast. Because when you are born with personality, there is imbalance, or some kind of we call result of the imbalances. That's why we are born, and we have to constantly face it in order for us to recognize the, 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 our responsibility in it. 
then uh, you know it um, it has been started a long way ago. So it would take a long time to balance back. So this imbalance day is like kind of like a comfort zone that we are. And that's why we feel imbalance. Yeah. Yeah, it's our personality, our karma, our personality. Yeah. And we're born with that. That's why we. That's why we like it. Okay. But we like it and we attach to it, it's not helping. You understand? Because it will keep us in that unhappiness, up and down state. It's, we cannot disentangle ourselves. We just get back to the same thing. You look around, nobody's happy. Why they're not happy? Because their life is already based on the foundation of imbalance and continue to be imbalanced. So you come to yoga because of that, because of the imbalance, and you practice yoga in order to get the balance. Okay? So that you can get the 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 unity, the u the un, uniting balancing factor. Okay? That is not, like I said, it's not this or that. It's not you know how you call it? Uh, compensation. But true balance. Okay? Which is it has to start from the the bottom up. It has to start from the Um, it has to start from reconnecting back to our true essential nature. Understand? Let's go yoga. You reconnect back to your true essential nature beyond this personality, then you start to be balanced. If you keep remembering yourself of that essential nature that is perfect, that don't have imbalances, okay, then you can rectif- rect- how say that? readjust this personality yeah, eventually. And it readjusts and change. Then eventually that essential nature that is not imbalance will be the tone, will be the your expression. And uh, the other old per- personality that come from the imbalances will slowly fade away. It fade away. I said fade away, and it slowly, it just, you don't remember it. It's just gone. And something else replaced, you see? But when we are so imbalanced that when it starts to fade away and we are so fearful that we lose ourselves, that we get it back, we are attached to it back again. See? So then we become sick again. So we would have to trust, that's why I said we have to trust the process, because in, from our point of view we can just cannot see it. We cannot see or feel, you know. We, number one, we cannot see and feel our imbalance, you don't know. Subjectively using that mind to appreciate it, you know, where we are, we just cannot, we just, just cannot see. So that's why we need somebody from external, you know, like you said, you're sick, you need a doctor. You are, you want to balance yourself, you have to compare yourself to somebody that is balanced. 
You have to get out of your own mind in order to see it. You have to trust. You don't know where it goes and why you need to do it, but you need to do it. So when this, um, you know, when when you become quiet, okay, when it starts to become calm and quiet, content. So it is that you already have somehow achieved something, and you just cannot put the finger on it. You just become quiet and calm and peaceful. And Nothing to say. And you say, hmm, I don't know, it's strange. There's nothing to say. So you have achieved something. As opposed to what we are usually thinking, this is what we're usually thinking, if I'm doing something, if I'm achieving something, I'm accomplishing something, or something extraordinary happened to my life, this is it. But this is not it, actually. You see how yoga is so completely different than our normal way of thinking? It's not because yoga is different, because yoga shows you the way to liberation to freedom, to happiness. And if you don't practice yoga, then it becomes all the time very loud, very dramatic. A lot of things happening. Life is very complicated. You know, the world is full of this and that. People are very complicated. You feel very miserable, or you feel very elated, and you feel very this and very that. But not like that. In a yoga point of view, description, it's, it's not like that. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's it. So just please recognize your tendency. And um, your compensation, you know, your extreme this, extreme that, and the compensation mode. I feel I'm too emotional and I get all the time hurt, so I'm going to, you know, close off my emotions. Then I'm going to be logical. That is called compensation mode. It doesn't lead you to happiness or to balance state. Yeah, or I feel I'm too logical, so I'm going to just pull all the valves loose, and I'm going to just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That's also not it. So y yoga, or yoga say go with the middle ground. to, you know, even in the, in the asanas, we, we teach like that. Yeah? If a person is super, super flexible, their, their tendency is just to keep going to the super flexible, push himself. Yeah, the teacher, the have an eye, had to say, oh, stop it. It's not because you are flexible, like a pretzel, that is called good yoga. Calm yourself, don't go to the extreme. Yeah, be in the middle. And the world is the opposite. When the person is super, super flexible, say, oh yeah, this person is advanced in yoga. They're not advanced, they are just lopsided. <laughs> <laughs> and the opposite. Yeah. Very stiff. Person. Also. Okay, so the stiff person has to be try to become more flexible. And the flexible person has to, to become stronger. Okay? So 
also for balance. It will strength and and flexibility. You can see in daily life is like this. You, know? you adapt, adapt so you are flexible. But then you have to you, know, you have to um, also uh, how do you call it step. Uh, be grounded, step down, and know this is it. You see? But if you are all the time flexible and you don't know how to ground yourself and to say no, then also it's not okay. And if a person is all the time, this is my way and this is it, or all the other people are doomed and they are wrong, you see? So this is called an inflexible kind of um, personality, and they cannot adapt, they cannot see another point of view, they cannot be empathetic, then you can see already that something is not right. So the balance also is between flexibility and strength. Okay? You say yoga, you cultivate the flexibility and the strength. Both. That's called a good yogi. In the asanas, even in the asanas. You have to be flexible and strong. So that is very beautiful when you look at. You know. And um, who knows? In the same, everywhere. In the singing, you know, you can sing beautifully, but at the same time, you have to have some kind of energy, some kind of shakti, some kind of power. Yeah? A good singer would be the person that is able to express the devotion and has at the same time that strength, the character that is expressing through. Okay. Question? The in the you know, Shivananda Yoga system, the balancing posture is at the end. The headstand posture, the inverted posture, is in the beginning. And in between, the right and left, the up and down, the, is uh, the ba- is a practice. The uh, inverted posture that basically completely start over, <laughs> imbalance you, but put your cut your how do you say, pull the carpet under your feet, and basically your feet are not can not even stand. Your feet are up. Mm-hmm. So you just cannot function the normal way how you do. So it put the, the consciousness first. So then you you would um, you have to re re rethink about the whole thing, re look at everything, rethink about the whole thing, in order for you even to be balanced and survive. When you do the headstand. So that's when you, you start to rethink a little bit the way how you think. You see? The way how you think about yourself and the world and others. You have to rethink about this. So you can see your you take responsibility of your of your vision instead of continuing blaming. Take your responsibility of your vision and Start the training to bring back the balance. So when you you train, then you know you go through the pain of it. Some posture is very painful for you. You just don't like to do it, and some posture is so easy. Yeah? But you do both. You do the easy posture and the not easy posture in the same manner, same way, so that you balance it back. 
And in the practice, you always, you know, very careful with this. Right, left. Posture, counter posture. The breathing is is a conciliatory. I mean, calm. And then at the end, you do the balancing posture. After everything has been, been practiced, and then you do your balancing posture at the end. And you notice when you're balancing posture, for example, the three posture or the Nataras posture, you know, you, you look, you can practice, you can just demonstrate mm -hmm. without your shawl so people can see. There's a three poster. That's an easy three. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's early, so yeah. yeah. What is it? Early. That's early. <laughs> okay. So let's say the three poster. And you can see when he look, he has to at the same time his eyes have to look. Focus at one point, right? This side, when you focus, balance. You have to look, focus at one point. But you can see that looking, you have to, you just notice when you practice that, where your looking is, when you balance. You look at one point, but at the same time, you see almost 360 degrees around. That's when you balance. You see? If you're really looking at something too much and really fixated on it, you lose balance. You have to look, but at the same time relax, and you are in that state. Okay? And you can hold there, and you don't know how you hold, but you hold there, completely balanced. Okay? So that's, that's what we try to achieve in life is you are in the in that state after you you practice long time then the 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 energy of balance start to develop within you then at that time you are not knowing actually what you're doing and everything come out perfect okay but uh, before that then you are too concerned about everything what you're doing, and nothing come out perfect. Because it's a one side of the brain, on the other side of the brain work. And it's not the state of, we call it uh, um, balance, that is egoless. And there's no ego there. And it's come out perfect. So we call it, at that time, we call it grace. You know, call it like God's grace take over. I don't know what I'm doing, you know. And yet, it's not that I'm losing my mind or something. I don't know what I'm doing, but everything come out perfect for some reason. See, so that's because the ego is not there. So you can imagine that this is an advanced state, because most of the time we become very fearful. You know, we want to control. And controlling is a, is already is a, an expression of 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 a fear and wanting to hold on to what you you know to be you. But you're afraid to let go of it because when you let go of it, it's the beginning of a change, and then you feel very uncomfortable. So you you understand the psychology. But you would have to let go of the control in order for you to... Control is the, the other, the left brain kind of person. Yeah? And sometimes because we have control, more or less, uh, and sometimes it's a, you, you see it's complicated. Yeah? Because the right brain person survive because they control. They're right brain, so they have tendency to go whoop. But they, you know, it's strong, so they control it. See? 
to balance themselves somehow. But then um, eventually they will have to let go of that so that it can it can uh, integrate. But it's uh, difficult. So to every phases, if you observe yourself and you you understand how it works. If you understand, we call the the idea of balance and ha and ta and, and and balancing, yin and yang and and um, passive and aggressive and male and female, yeah, then you know how it develops slowly. Okay, so we are born with gender. Okay, your gender male or gender female is already a statement of our lack of unity. So that's why a female will always try to grasp, grasp to the male in order to become balanced and complete, and a male will grasp to the female in order to be balanced and complete. But eventually you will be able to recognize the male and the female within yourself. Why you are so needing something external to balance, because something is lacking within you, to find the, the perfection of the union within you. So the, the, the complete story of love is the story within you and what's happening within you. So it is said in all the spiritual path that we come to a point when you, you reach out you know, to the beloved and you want to, you know, um, find that, to complete yourself, then come to a point when you, the beloved disappear, and it says that you are just lonely, you're just alone, and you say, oh my God, all my life I've been one, he said, now all the love can disappear, and I'm so alone. But it is said in all the spiritual literature, this is actually, is the, is the state of achieving the balance and then you then there is nothing external and you feel lonely but in fact it is just perfect you can accept that okay hari om tat sat